When I was in high school, I sang in a community choir in my coastal Maine hometown each summer. The average age was somewhere north of 55. Yes, I was a very cool teenager. The director was a charismatic man, an experienced educator with a truly encyclopedic knowledge of vocal music. Each August, he would somehow drag a pretty respectable performance of some great classical work or another out of a very small, rural community. He was widely admired, and I learned a lot of great things from him. One day in rehearsal, it became clear that some of us were struggling on a relatively easy passage of music. Our director got a bit irritated at this and admonished us with the following quote, amateurs practice until they get it right professionals practice until they can't get it wrong. I remember being impressed by this. Clearly there was another level of excellence I needed to attain to become professional. To remind myself of my newfound duty to perfection, I wrote the words out in fancy handwriting on a piece of paper and displayed them on the wall of my room where many other inspirational quotes already hung. In the years to come, I would take this quote to heart throughout my young performance career. And you know, looking back, it definitely played a role in the premature and almost complete destruction of my relationship with music. This may actually be the worst advice you could ever give anyone wanting to get good at anything. Let's talk about why and how I'm trying to redefine my relationship with practice. Hey folks, Ethan here. Welcome back to Plan B. For those of you just joining now, until September of this year, I was a software engineer working for big tech. Now I'm pursuing my dreams of music and video production until I inevitably run out of money, and I'm documenting it all for you to see, the highs and the lows alike. From the very beginning of my break from work, I've been doubting myself, less about whether I can actually make a sustainable career out of music and more about whether I can actually get anything done at all. The reason for this? I am terrible at picking up new skills. I grew up as a kid with crippling ADHD, but a natural aptitude for certain school subjects that masked the problem. As I progressed through school, I became used to the idea that I was either naturally good or naturally terrible at everything, and there was no way to change any of it. Natural aptitude only gets you so far in the real world, of course. I was left in college feeling like I was falling behind in the things that I was great at, and no better at the things at which I was terrible. My attempts to train myself out of this situation were frustrating and ultimately futile. And while all the extrinsic motivation made me relatively decent at my software job, in September I left work still having no idea how I was going to fix my problem. There were lots of things I was naturally okay at in media production, but other skills needed serious work. Clearly I needed to think about how to pick up healthy practice habits if I wanted to succeed at anything this year. So how do you develop a better relationship with practicing? Before we even get into specific strategies, I think many of us need to start by completely forgetting the way that we have been educated. Let's look at that quote from earlier before again. Amateurs practice until they get it right, professionals practice until they can't get it wrong. There is one very basic fallacy underlying these words, one that permeates education systems worldwide and has prevented untold numbers of students from reaching their potential. The assumption is that somehow imperfection is a moral failure to care about your work. If pros just get to where they are by practicing longer until they can't get it wrong, it implies that the only way that you can get things wrong is if you haven't practiced enough. Practice is viewed as always steadily producing improvement. If you aren't where you want to be, you must just not be putting enough hours in. On some level, you you must just not care. You shouldn't think about how you may not be practicing efficiently or any factors causing you to avoid practice. Instead, you should somehow shame yourself out of your own poor motivation and discipline. Now, it makes sense to me why frustrated educators anywhere might slip into this mode of thought occasionally. It's really easy to blame your students when you're trying everything you can, but they still aren't getting it. But that doesn't change the fact that this framing is both incorrect and harmful to learning. When people are underperforming, and sometimes even when they're underpreparing, the problem is not always that they don't care enough. Sometimes it's exactly the opposite. They care entirely too much and are investing their entire self-worth into their task. An influential review article published in the Elementary School Journal in 1984 by Martin Covington mentions a danger in children trying hard to achieve educational goals and still failing leading them to believe that they just don't have what it takes to succeed. This often leads to a vicious cycle in which people with very low self-esteem prefer the guilt from avoiding preparation over the intense humiliation they expect to receive if they put in more effort and still fail. If you know you're not going to succeed, not trying takes less work and doesn't bruise your ego as much. How often have you heard the phrase, I'm just bad at math? So if the problem isn't always our own moral failure to care, what is it? 
Well, to begin with, not all practice and preparation is equal. Success is not the same as number of hours practiced, as some may have you believe. In fact, the researcher K. Anders Ericsson, whose 1993 paper on deliberate practice was the inspiration for Malcolm Gladwell's infamous 10,000 hour rule for mastery that essentially stated this, spent most of the back half of his career defending his research from oversimplifications like this. The quality of your preparation, shocker, is an important missing factor here. There are a number of recent studies that actually fail to find any relationship alone between between the hours that students spend practicing music and their performance quality, but if you instead account for time spent practicing with deliberate and organized strategies, the relationship to performance quality magically reappears. And even beyond quality of practice, there still might be another issue inevitably leading to dissatisfaction, our own expectations of ourselves. You remember that last half of the quote, professionals practice until they can't get it wrong? Newsflash, people are not machines and they cannot and should not aim for perfection. Even the best practice in the world couldn't get you there. And professionals get it wrong all the freaking time. You just don't notice it when they do because what they are very good at is recovering from their mistakes. In a 1996 study, 10 highly skilled Yale graduate pianists recorded four classical piano pieces with which they were somewhat unfamiliar. Almost all made many errors throughout their performances. Eight undergrads, also skilled in piano, were then paid to listen to those recordings, looking at the musical score the entire time, and identify as many errors as possible. 62% of all errors made by a test subject were never detected by a single listener. Maybe there is something after after all to faking it until you make it. Anyway, this is all to say, if you feel like you failed to live up to your goals in something you think you do care about, there's no doubt that there's a lot of work ahead of you. But maybe the first step, particularly if you're dreading and avoiding that work, is to just stop thinking of the past as your personal failure. Because if you're watching this video and you've gotten this far, I'm pretty convinced that you do care. And it's probably not that you haven't practiced enough. If you're anything like me, here's how things might have actually gone for you. From the beginning, used to immediate praise, you may have expected nothing less than perfection from yourself. When you didn't achieve perfection without effort, you dove into self-imposed preparation for weeks without much guidance. But then you still weren't perfect. After such hard work, you fell on your face. Your effort was worthless, which meant you were worthless. Embarrassed, you largely gave up trying at all. The narratives we tell ourselves determine the ways that we interact with the world around us. My dysfunctional relationship with music cannot be fixed until I recognize what it actually is. Not a lack of talent or the universe hating me, but unrealistic expectations combined with ineffective practice habits and poor self-worth. To make any real progress, I have to first leave all these things and this stupid quote behind. It is only in deeply understanding the true nature of the problems that face us that we can even approach solving them. Now I'm just about out of time and camera battery for this week, but next time on Plan B, I'll explore some concrete ways I'm learning to practice music more effectively while maintaining my sanity. Until then, I wish you all the best. If you want to see more from me and or hear my music, please subscribe or follow this channel. And don't forget to leave a comment if there's anything you'd like me to talk about in a future week. I do take requests. Thanks for watching, be well, and stay tuned for next week.